welcome back. Coming out crisis, clashes, land disputes over the years has plagued several state and local governments in Nigeria. In some cases, it even leads to the loss of lives and people being displaced. Today on this show, we believe in giving the people of the community a role to play by proposing solutions and also speaking about the issues to see how we can have this resolved. This is not strange, and this is also the case of the Idumeje Uboko people of Delta State who are here to discuss an issue and propose solutions to end some of this crisis. Discussing this with us are... We have Chief Christopher Ogu, uh, Prince Walter Eziaishi, Mr. Nelson Ilo and Dr. Ayondona Umko. Welcome, gentlemen, and I hope I did justice to the pronunciations <laughs> of your name. I said, I said for one thing, Thank yes. you. the attachments. The ESA, it is very important to express who he is. Okay, most definitely, and I'll so allow you to do that uh, for yourself. But let me start with you, Chief Christopher Ogu. Walk us through this communal crisis that has plagued your community. Well, uh, let me start by telling that my name is Chief Chris Ogu. I'm the Yase of Idumujubugo. Idumujubugo is a kingdom located in the Nyocha North local government area of Delta State, just a few kilometers away from Asaba, which is familiar to all of you. Uh, in 2015, uh, we decided uh, to grant some permission to, pers to persons who wanted uh, to uh, use land to develop the community. We had to develop the community from a rural agrarian community into an industrialized community. So we started receiving applications from many people to, use, to, to buy into our land system. Uh, one of those persons who applied for allocation of land was uh, Prince Ned Moko, uh, who applied first for 33 uh, hectares and then for 90 hectares uh, and through due process. The rigorous process he was granted by his own, his highness, his majesty, the Obi of Idumudubuko, Obi Albert Okuwadiego Muko, granted that he get the land and he paid the required uh, sums of money and the, the land, land was allo allocated to him. After the meetings of the land allocation committee and all of these transactions, about five months later, we, we began to see some people come up to say, that the procedure was, was, was not in their favor, that they were, it was wrong, and that uh, we shouldn't have given land. And so since then, we've had arguments in the community, back and forth. And we have been having, taking time to explain to the people of Nigeria, the people of Idumu Jubuko, the people of Delta State, that the people who, was, who were in a position, including myself, as he has said, have looked at the proposals as his plans, and we have agreed to give him land on that due process. And we have also uh, decided to protect the interest of the community because we got a 60-40 uh, equity arrangement. We didn't charge money for it, which many people thought that we charged money for land. We did not charge uh, Linus International any money for the land. We said to him, if you want to get this land and to build a university, build a golf course, whatever you are going to build, we want to, be, to have 40% equity. We want to share for our children, for our children yet unborn. So we got an equity, I, I mean, a, a, a memorandum of understanding that allows us to share 40% of this project as a community. People thought we had taken money, and they are going about trying to blackmail us, say all kinds of things about us, especially when they discovered that we didn't take money, because they too would have taken money. But we are thinking of our, of our children, not about us. Mm. That is, so that is the crisis that is still on, which we are here to explain further to the people. Okay, okay. Chief, thank you very much for saying that. And to our viewers at home, I must um, clearly state that the opinions shared on this show do not reflect um, the opinions of African um, Independent Television and the weekend show, but that of our viewers and of the guests. Yes. Um, Mr. Nelson, it's... No, no. No, just a second, but right. Mr. Nelson, it's important that when things like this happen, we put names and faces to this. And you are from that community and you've suffered some loss as a result of these issues. Um, I understand you lost your dad and we are sorry about yes, that. Sir. We you. regret your loss. Can you tell us how you and your family have been affected by this? Thank you just very much. Briefly. Thank you for having me. Well, uh, I want to say thank you for the opportunity to speak because it's a terrible experience. And um, I think it has become very imperative for me to talk about the mayhem, the terror that was unleashed 
particularly on my father and other people that supported development in the village. These people support the building of the university, likewise my dad. Because my dad is the secretary to the uh, land uh, allocation committee. So after due process was followed in the land allocation and all that, they want to compel him to, together with other people, to reverse this process. That was how the crisis erupted. And they came to my house, they abducted my dad, beat him up, he was naked, kids were dragging him from my place, which is not very far to the palace. They dealt with him mercilessly, and somebody supervised the beating of my father. He supervised it, and they said they should cut his hands off so he could no longer write. They should inflict internal injuries on him so that he can die slowly. They did all that to my dad. Has this been reported to the law enforcement yes, agency? Yes, it was reported, way? duly reported, and petitions have been written for these people to be brought to justice. There is nobody that has the right to take another man's life in the eyes of God and in the eyes of man. And this is Nigeria. We have uh, 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 civil rights which are protected by the government and the judicial system. So I, I, I am telling the whole world my story. And to crown it all, the most sad part of the story is after this was done to my family, my father died and they refused me burying my father in the village that we, my family would be banished, that we are no longer citizens of Idumu Juboko, which is very absurd. You know, these Prince, people. Prince, sorry, sorry to interject. Prince Walter, as you've heard these allegations, what's your reaction to this? You're a part of the, you're a member of the implementation committee of uh, uh, the proposed Stars University, which is also going to be um, located there. So, how do you react to an allegation like this? Is it really an allegation or statement of fact? You tell me. Yeah, they are statements of fact. The truth is that land was applied for by Liners International through Prince Network, like he said. And land, the due processes were followed and land was allocated. Few months after, precisely on the 8th of August, another letter came that the OB said no. I'm talking of uh, the late OB who died February 2017, that the, the OB said no. And that no, the two letters, now went through the process of investigation by the police to establish whether the OB truly signed these documents. And the police came up with a report that the letter being uh, displayed by Prince Ned was duly signed by Let OB. And that the other letter was procured illegally using the closeness to the OB aside the due process. And as I speak with you now, that matter is before the court of the forgery of the second letter, which says that the OB did not approve the allocation of land. Thereafter, in 2017, the OB died. The son that same day proclaimed himself king contrary to the processes, contrary to the customs of the people. Now, this, this problem is between the elites in diaspora. I call them elites in diaspora because some of them that were watch on televisions for months, for years, they have not visited Idumujumoku. And if you ask them where that land is, they don't know, okay? It is a responsibility of what we call the Ono to, headed by the ESN said as a traditional prime minister, to deal with the issue of land. It is not a collective uh, responsibility of everybody because in the community you have the Zwani, which is the General Assembly, you have the OB in Council, you have series down that way. The Ono to are responsible for land matters. 
and the people assigned with that matter are the high chiefs, the ESL, the Odogu, and the others. And those were the people that when the application from NED came on the 16th of March, the OB uh, uh, referred the letter to them. And they dealt with it the way they deal with other people's applications. But because the land is large, and it's worthy of note to say that the land in question is, does not belong to any particular person in Idumudubuko. It's a communal land set aside since 1969 for development purposes. And for anybody to say that Uboko is a, is a village that does not have such land is a lie. Uboko shares boundary with two more local governments. Uboko shares boundary with Edo State. Okay? And those people who are saying those things, are they geographers? Do they work with the um, um, Ministry of Lands and, then, and, um, survey. Uh, and um, survey? We have the survey approved since 1971. Okay, I want to quickly bring um, Dr. Ondona Umka in. Um, so, but before you come in, okay. I want to quickly say yes. that those who are propagating that Prince Ned Nwoko is a bully, Prince Ned Nwoko is a land grabber, Prince Ned Nwoko is a forger, they are all misleading the people. And if you know them, if you sit with them, you hate them because they are pure fallacious. Okay, so I want to bring um, Dr. Ondona Umka into this conversation. You are a public affairs um, analyst yeah. and so listening to all the sides of this case it also sounds to me like this now becomes a legal issue um what's your take on it and what do you propose to be part of the solutions to fix this yeah i thank you very much i am affected aside um aside the issue of uh, of land dispute um aside the land issue i'm i'm, I'm affected my relation uh, was uh, was killed uh, by, or um, rather, as a result of this land matter, uh, or maybe the, the royal torso in Idumuju, and um, that is the angle. I'm worried. We're worried. The family is worried about uh, about the, the, the heinous crime because this was somebody uh, who happened to be um, a motorcyclist, a commercial motorcyclist, living in Idumuju. And of course, carrying out his legitimate business, and uh, at the point he took a passenger to the to the palace where the the supposed I mean the the crown prince is that's Prince uh, Chukunoso Nwoko, and uh, in the process, uh, the, the from the witness statement of witnesses uh, we we received from the police is that he was he was lynched. It was uh, the, by the orders of, 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 of those in the palace, which Chukunuzo um, uh, happens to be the head there. They, 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 they attacked him and killed him on the supposed premise that he was a spy uh, on, 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 on whatever grounds they felt. And uh, we are worried because uh, we let them tell, give us the evidence they saw on this person to actually justify that he was a, a spy. And which police station did they take him to actually ascertain that he was culpable or whatever they felt, and they, they decided to kill him. And after killing him, they took the body, dismembered it, and uh, they, 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 they wheelbarrowed it to an unknown, unknown destination. And up to this very moment, we have not been able to recover the body. So what and this is all under the purview and the supervision of the of the uh, of the of the of the of the palace leader so, so these are allegations yeah. that you have made that we cannot confirm so we have to categorically state that on this that program. is under police investigation okay so yeah. we can't confirm that but these are clearly your opinions let me give chief the final word here what is the lasting solution moving forward how do you reckon we can finally put this communal clash to a halt and peace can finally reign in your community thank you very much for this opportunity <coughs> to, to uh, proffer a peaceful, peaceful solution to this crisis. Uh, well, the people of uh, Idimujubuku, we have, for mm, the past several months, I'm sorry, several years, been holding meetings uh, for peace. We have had, in fact, meetings with the Inspector General, the Deputy, I mean, when he was uh, uh, AIG, Assistant Inspector General of Police, we had a meeting with him about peace. 
and it was discovered that there really is no problem between the members of the royal family in Idimu Yubuku, which is the reason for all of this crisis. That there is really no problem because when he asked them, when he asked uh, Prince Muku, Prince Nosomuku, why are you fighting your brother Ned Muku? He said the man has no respect. And then. When they asked Timoko, he said, well, I have, I mean, I am responsible for a lot of uh, support to him. I respect him. When they asked the other one, the other brother, I mean, the lawyer, Mbanefo, Prince Mbanefo, why are you fighting your brother? He said he nearly took his, his place in a campaign, I mean, in his own party. And the man says, I am not a member of your party. How can, if you have won a, a seat, a senatorial seat to contest, how can I take it? I'm not a member of your party. I belong to the PDP. Are you belong to AMP, or something. So, there has no, there is no, re, no real reason. Everywhere we have gone, people have said, go back and settle, go back and settle, go back and settle. In fact, our last outing was with the Owa, the, the, the Obi of Owa Kingdom. And the Obi of Oka, Owa looked at the whole thing and came up with a six point plan that let you push go home and settle this matter. Call a meeting amongst yourself and settle this matter because they really can't find what the problem is. And we, I mean, we can't find what the problem is. At first, we were insistent that this thing has to be settled in court. We have more than eight cases in courts. They are still subsisting. Even when they said, I mean, the, the, the Council of Traditional Rulers said, please withdraw all cases in court so that we can step in fully and resolve this matter. Even when we are, resolved, when we are withdrawing all those cases, people still can't believe that the matter can be settled without justice without a legal I mean, understand, understanding of the issues, that we have to still be in court. Just, just a word to assist him. Yeah. You see, every people have made attempts for peace. The only thing that can bring peace in Itumudubuko is sincerity and truth. For us to come out and tell ourselves the home truth. For example, I had somebody on air, on this station, AIT, saying that the letter be took prisoner to court. That's not true. That's not true. So until we learn to tell ourselves the home truth, tell the world the, the, the basic truth, peace will elude us. And we must be prepared for justice because peace without justice is, I mean, it can't work. It can't work. So we want peace. But we can't have peace if we don't tell ourselves the truth. People were maimed, people people's houses were burnt and somebody will come up because it did not affect him he will say no nothing like that happened for instance his family they lost their son up to today they don't know where the corpse is so what will bring peace in Idumujuboko is not going to come from any outsider it is going to come from Idumujuboko people because more than six people are groups including the uh, former deputy governor of Delta, of, uh, Delta State, yes. They've all tried. So Idumujuboko people have to go home. Those who are writing what they are writing on the Facebook, on the cyberspace, and going on television to say a lot of things, they should all come back to Idumujuboko. Let us have a town hall meeting and resolve the Dumujuboko people until Luboko people make up their mind to tell themselves the truth, there will be no peace. That's a fine place to leave it. We do our prayer and our hope is that from this conversation that we've had today, that you'll be able to find some lasting solutions to the issues plaguing your community. Gentlemen, thank you so much for taking out time to speak with us in today's program. Okay. Uh, thank that's you. all. You're most welcome. That's all we have for you on today's program. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Weekend Show NG on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And you can follow our personal handles at Osasu Igbenadian. And Andy Madaki on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We'll see you same time, same place next week. God bless you. <laughs>